Welcome to what might be the easiest way possible to create a complete adventure game, a large world actually, in JavaScript. And you're going to do this with like less than two pages of code. It's like really short, really simple to understand. I thought this would be an absolute blast. This is intended for my Redlands Conservatory class, but absolutely everybody is welcome to follow along. So we start here at nunco.com forward slash RC. These are the programming pages. Click on programming pages. And over here we have our day-to-day -day complete lessons. Click there. We're going to scroll down to Lesson 10. Uh, for those of you who might be just joining us, uh, I've got lessons starting out with a complete overview of the language, do a whole bunch of fun things like how to implement graphics. I raced through all of these. So the lecture, or whatever you want to call this, the video following this, I'm going to do a slow video where I go through and carefully explain each thing. But I always like to get information as fast as I possibly can, especially in the world where you can hit uh, pause on your video here and go over anything to your heart's content. So these I raced through. And I just thought it would be the quickest way uh, for you to get up and running with JavaScript. So here we have Lesson 10. This is going to be our first game. And this has cut and paste code, just like the rest of the lessons. So click here for the cut and paste code. And this is the complete code right here uh, for the engine for our JavaScript game. So let's go ahead and we'll cut it. We can just highlight the code. Code only, of course. Hit Control-C, Control-C. Uh, we'll use the back arrow. So we head back to our class page, and here's our online editor where we can edit and test our code. So it comes up with a built-in uh, program. We'll erase that, just delete that text, and then Control-V will paste in our video game. So we're going to take a look at our video game in just a second. Now this is version 1, which is what I call Find the Cat, which is the initial object of the game. We click See Result. And boom, we end up with a doorway, an entry doorway. We end up with buttons to go north, south, east, or west. Now, I wanted this code to be as simple as possible for you. So I've only defined three screens. So there are actually only three rooms in the game right now because I thought there's no reason to have uh, room after room because that's just going to lengthen the code and make it a little more confusing as to what's going on. I wanted just the basic engine here so that you can add as many rooms to the game as you would like. And I'm going to show you how to do that first, and then we'll go into a step-by-step -step of how the program works. And we'll get this done again, as usual, in just a few minutes. So our game is up. We've got our entryway, and let's go ahead and we'll head north. We head north one step, and what happens? We see that out. we've moved outside, and we're in a field. And it tells us that our location is lost. We're lost. Uh, we're north one step, south zero steps, east zero steps, and west zero steps. So let's say we wanted to go west. We'll go west maybe three clicks. And it tells us, hey, we've gone west three clicks. So now we're north one click and west three clicks. So by setting everything up on a grid like this, you really have an unlimited world. And each of those steps you could have defined a picture for and elements that would be in a room for your adventure. Like I said, I only defined three rooms because I wanted to keep the code as readable as possible for us today. But it's super, super easy. So now we went west three steps. If we want to go the other way, we'd go east. So when we click east, the west decreases until we're back to zero, zero again. And as we continue to press east, now east increases. So now we're two steps east, one step north. Now I hid the cat somewhere, so I know where he's hidden. So I'm going to go east 12 steps and north 12 steps. That's where I've hidden the cat. And we'll see what we find. 9, 10, 11, 12, and boom! Couldn't resist it, huh? There's our, our grumpy cat. So those are the only rooms that I defined right now. You can define as many rooms as you like, and you can define how big your grid want, it can be. You could have a grid of up to, I believe, uh, gosh, it would be um, several million squares if you wanted to do that, and I'm sure you don't want to. This also <laughs> inspired me to think what well, we could turn this into, uh, because it actually calls these pictures from a web page, we could turn this into a combination lock. How about you went to a web page and you have a secret web page somewhere? You could have somebody have to find that secret web page by clicking through your little JavaScript thing here, and only your friends might know exactly where the location of the web page is. So it could serve as a combination lock. And I'm going to actually make a combination lock program uh, in our next uh, our next video, I hope. So let's cruise down, and we'll get right to how the code works. I'm going to go a step at a time through it since it's such a short uh, section of code. But I wanted to start off, like I told you, by showing you how you can make your own modifications uh, and create a room for each one of those steps. 
and then we'll get into the explanation. That way, if you just want to design rooms, if you just want to build your own game, you don't have to learn all the rest of the code. If you want to learn the rest of the code, we're going to cover that second. So I'm going to highlight some text here. So here is the section of code where you will define each of your rooms. Uh, there's actually some advanced ways of doing this that we'll do in the future where you can assign attributes. Uh, but for the moment, let's keep it as simple as possible, like I said. So this is your function, my position. And from each time you press a button, it will call the function my position to find out where you are. And this is simply a statement, the second statement, that tells the uh, program that we're going to display uh, an image. It's kind of a slick way of doing an image swap. And then your logic is right here. And this is where you will define each room. So our first room, it says, if north equals 3, remember to use two equal signs, not one. If you use one equal sign, you'll define north as being equal to 3. With two equal signs, we say, if north is equal to 3. And then two ampersands, which is and, west is equal to 3. So if north is equal to 3, and west is equal to 3, then we'll do whatever appears between these curly Q brackets. So in this case, I define the variable position as saying cat freaks out. So that variable position is what we will define to be whatever text we want to appear in our room. And that can be anything you'd like it to be. It can be uh, instructions about what the room is, this is the grand hall, or whatever you'd like to do. Um, or it can simply be a little caption commentary, like it's going to be with our little cat game here, our cat sample game. And then next, we have an image here, which is uh, HTTP. It gives a web address as to where the image is going to be found. So we can insert our own image. All we've got to do is go to the web, You'll be able to do uh, just about anything you would like. Go to Google or whatever search engine you like. Google. It's funny that it didn't come up with that right away. <laughs> we'll click on Google. Well, I got there the hard way. That's okay. And whatever our image should be. Let's say we wanted to have an image of a house. We'd say house search. And then I usually click on Google images. And boy, we've got a lot of houses to choose from. Well, I immediately sort of dig this goofy house over here. It caught my eye. Now I see that it's an enormous file, but what the heck. Let's go ahead. We'll call up that house and we'll click on view image. You basically just want to get to just as you can see, it's taking a while to load because it's a huge file. What a beautiful house though. So heck, this is what I was trying to avoid was a long load time. And as soon as our house loads, you know, only because it's taking so darn long, it's even this might take a while in JavaScript. Um, but as soon as your house loads, uh, you're going to go ahead and right click on it. We've got to wait till it loads. Come on house, let's load. Giant file, very high res, beautiful. Looks like a house I used to live in a long time ago, except I didn't have a nice paint job like that. Okay, so it's loaded up. We'll see how this loads. It'll be a good experiment. Right click on it. And you know what? We don't even need to right click on it. Let's do it the easy way. Look how big that is. My gosh. We will just go up here to the web address. Um, I'm going to hit Control and C to copy the web address. And then let's zip back to our program. <laughs> Boy, let's see how this works. This is going to be fairly interesting. Now we can put this house in place of where we had our cat before. So let's zip in and I'm going to go ahead and backspace and get rid of our cat uh, link and then control V. So all we've done is copy the web link into this first if statement here where we say if north and equals 3 and west equals 3, then we're going to say cat freak out and we're going to display the house. And let's see if it worked. We'll go see result and we'll go north 3, 1, 2, 3. And what did I say? West 3? West 1, 2, 3. And boom, there's our house. Wow, and that shows you how awesome JavaScript is that it takes that house, resizes it, and brings it up that fast. Remember how long it took to load? So that was a great experiment. So you don't have to worry about uh, how big the files are or how small they are. It's going to size it for you and it's going to do a great job. So by doing this, you can go to the web and find addresses for as many different uh, um, things as you would like people to see as they move through your maze and always have a picture to go with your maze. And instead of cat freaks out, you know, we could say this is the entrance to the haunted, uh, whatever you want to call this, haunted kaleidoscope house, whatever you'd like it to say. Uh, so now let's say you want another room. All you would need to do to do that is go ahead and copy this uh, if statement. We'll say control C to copy it. And then we'll make a space, oops, a space below it. And we'll do control V again. So now we've copied it, but let's change the location. So we'll say if north equals 2, say, and west equals 1. And you can quickly see that you could define any coordinate 
uh, in the grid that you would like, you know, up to, it's really is pretty much unlimited because it's getting this from elsewhere. So we now have our house at, uh, at this uh, two and one. And, you know, I'm just thinking we could put another graphic there, but since we're doing a video, we want to do this quickly. Uh, we'll just leave it a house. So let's check and see if we now have a house, same house, at north two and west one. So we'll say see result, north two, one, two, and west one. Boom, so we have a house there as well. And as you can see, you can fill in all of the different uh, all the different squares in your grid to have whatever your dungeon adventure or whatever adventure you're doing uh, should have. Now for a sample game, what I thought I might do is have all cats in the grid, all different funny cats. And I'm gonna put that up for you. You can cut and paste it from the webpage that I showed you earlier, the class webpage there, and it'll be a cat sample program. And ultimately, I wanna have a troll. And if you see a troll, you lose all your points. And if you see a cat, you maintain your points. And so I thought that'd be a fun game. So it'll be sort of a random, how much guts do you have to keep moving in different directions when at any time you could encounter the, the troll. So it's how many clicks you dare to do and how many cute cats you dare to see. So uh, once again, back here, you just continue to copy that same if statement and anywhere that you specify the coordinates, you can put a different picture and a different caption and have that appear. Uh, at the end, after the if statements, you have an else statement, which just says else, if there's nothing there, it's gonna say you're lost, and it's gonna print this picture that we're seeing here. Now, we don't wanna have people clicking on an enormous grid. If you even specify three steps in each direction, your grid is gonna have a 49 possible spaces. So only three steps in each direction, north, south, east, west, gives you a tremendous number of possibilities since it's really a grid which is seven by seven uh, because of the way this works. You'll see when you experiment with it. <laughs> so we want to limit the size of the grid. So I put in uh, a little limitation here towards the beginning of the program, uh, which is world size, variable world size. So right now the world size is three, meaning you can go three steps north, three steps south, three steps east, and if you go to the edge of that, let's see what happens here. We'll go three steps east, one, two, three, so those are all lost steps, and if we go one more, it will stop at four, it won't let us go any bigger. And when you fill this in with pictures, the fourth step will say lost, and all the other steps will have pictures. As a matter of fact, we could load that up super fast right now. Uh, I believe that underneath this program, I've got the whole, we don't need to save changes to that, I do. So we can do uh, control C and copy all this and control, you know, we'll zip back to the web page here and we will replace our code here with uh, the complete cat game, which I actually have ready to rock and roll. So all I did, if you take a quick look at this, is I simply went through and I defined each square with a different picture of a cat. So that's all I did, south zero, west two. I went through one at a time, south zero, west one, and I just did each row and each column. And this, like I said, will be available on the webpage for you so that you can not have to type all this in if you don't wanna do that, if you wanna have the same size grid. Let's do it, see result, what do we get? We start with this entrance doorway. We will then go north and we see a, a cat, and north again and we see a cat. And after three steps, there's another cat. I, I like that cat, one more north. And that's the border, that's as far as we can go, so it says you are now lost. So that is the basic idea for an engine within which you can make a dungeon. You can specify a different picture for every room. I noticed that LucasArt had free artwork, I'll try to find a link for that, up for people who are designing their own video games, uh, and specifically uh, text-based dungeon games, pictures for that. So it was really kind of neat. So try this game out, look through, see the different cats, make your own modifications, start your own dungeon, and with our next episode, we are going to get to the troll. Okay, and one super fast thing here at the end. I had mentioned that I would give you a rundown on the overall program, uh, and you don't necessarily need to do this if you just want to modify it and make your own dungeon, but let me give you a quick rundown, just an overview here. So the, the first statements here in the program, these are all the HTML, which are your web page setup, you know, up until it says script right there, and you simply have HTML commands for spacing, uh, including uh, indentations, which is the UL command, or single spaces, which are the uh, ampersand NBSP. And then you've got your first image, your starter image here, which is that doorway that I start right off with. Uh, and then you have four buttons defined, which have to be defined in HTML. You have your button for north, your button for west, button for east. As you look through it, you'll see how this is. And then all those buttons call functions in the script down here. Hey, another thing I'm going to do too is uh, my indentations here 
are not standardized. And I, it's something that I actually need to learn because I'm used to a much older fashioned programming language and I need to learn the modern indentation. So in future versions, I hope we'll learn that together. But for now, it's a functional thing and you're learning while I'm learning, which I hope is also a value. So here we go. So we go if, uh, so each of these functions, we have function my function one. Uh, and my function two, and my function three, and my function four, which are one function for each of those buttons. They're all identical. The code looks uh, lengthy now that I've got everything posted in, but it's just repetitious. It's just super simple. So each of the functions are the, are the same, and all they basically do is when you press that first button, which is the button for north, it says, okay, if north is greater than world size, then return then go ahead and just go back. So that way you won't have a, a situation where um, you're uh, outside of the world. You can define your world size as being only three and you don't have people getting lost out there in thousands of un unincorporated squares. Uh, so then if world size is uh, smaller than three, uh, it comes down to the next if statement. And it says if south is less than one, then north equals north plus one. So what it's doing there is it's making certain that as you click through these, and you go east, as you'll see, watch this, east is 4. Now, if we were to go south, we don't want south to increase yet. I mean, I'm sorry, east and west. We don't want west to increase yet. Uh, as, you're, as east is decreasing, we want first east to decrease back to that zero starting point. And then, as you continue to click west, we want west to increase. So this little second uh, if statement s simply makes certain uh, that if you need to decrease if you're at the other end of the line there, you need to decrease. If you've gone all the way west and you start heading east, you want to decrease west before you get all the way to the east side of that zero starting point. I hope that makes sense. If not, a quick look at this. And as you can see, it's just a really simple if-else statement to check on the north and the south. Uh, then it simply displays the position that they're at by giving a listing of all of the variables, as you can see here. And that is it for the functions. Uh, also, each function within it calls the other uh, function my position and my position is where you have entered all of the different uh, if else statements to see if the uh, uh, if that is the position that the person's at it goes through and it pulls all the squares to see where you are at if north equals three and west equals two and it just goes down that whole list of whatever you've told it to check uh, to find out if there's a room there or if there is not a room there and then it returns to that function. That is all there is to this program. And that's the long explanation there at the end. And I hope that was useful to you. Head over to the webpage. Go ahead. Uh, that's that nunco.com RC webpage. I'll post that up right here at the end. Head over to the webpage. Download these for yourself. Give them a go. Make some modifications. And show me what kind of a uh, wonderful dungeon or, or wonderful world that you come up with. Cool. Go for it.